Hans Kolop, I think you might have uh, said that better than me, but anyway. Um, so I'm just going to run through, I guess, the journey of how I got to uh, here, um, which was not a love of talking in public. Um, <laughs> but, but we'll see how we get on. Um, so uh, where did it all begin? Uh, it began quite a long time ago. Um, I have always had a, a passion for sustainability. Um, in fact, I'll dial it back a wee, wi a wee way to the beginning. Um, so I'm Pakia. I grew up in central Auckland. I've lived here my entire life, uh, and I love it. Um, my family are originally from Ireland, England, and Scotland, which means they've done a lot to uh, undermine all the things we love about it. Um, we, uh, as a family, though, my parents and grandparents have been involved in environment and social justice movements um, throughout my life. So that included things like going on protest marches as a young kid um, and being involved with various movements. My dad was um, in the anti-apartheid movement. He also sailed across the Pacific on the Pacific Peacemaker to protest uh, nuclear testing at Mururoa. Um, so a, lo a lot of kind of background of, of that growing up. Um, I was also brought up a Quaker, which is a, a whole different topic. Um, but what that means is that um, pacifism and bearing witness are an important part of life and understanding that you can always challenge the status quo. Um, I was also lucky enough to grow up in a family that loved the outdoors. So it was tramping, camping, sailing, fishing, or just spending time at the beach. Um, that was a pretty constant part of my childhood. Um, and I still love trail running, nature photography, um, and just escaping the city basically whenever I can and whenever I can drag my family out there. Um, awareness of environmental issues and climate change um, sort of began quite early for me. My brothers called me a leafy green tree hugger for as long as I can remember. Um, and so I became a uh, pescatarian, which is a vegetarian that can't bear to give up seafood, um, when I was 13 and, and have been ever since. And I planned to have a career in environmental science or resource management. Um, but by the time I finished my geography degree, I found I couldn't get a job uh, in environment science or resource management. Um, but I could use computers, uh, uh, gaming mostly. Um, and I had actually gained some IT experience working part-time through university. So from that, I was able to get my first um, IT job, which kick-started my technology career. Um, I then spent the next 15 years uh, working within uh, a variety of um, organizations uh, in the corporate world uh, doing IT. Um, and through that, I tried as much as possible to incorporate my values where I could. I was on the green teams, I was volunteering, tree planting, uh, helping them reduce waste, etc. But it never really felt like the balance was there in terms of that, that level of impact. We've known about climate change and global inequality for a long, long time. And we've utterly failed to do anything enough about it. So five years ago, uh, my co-founder Andy and I were working, uh, running the local IT team for a global publishing company. We were uh, encouraged, gently, or not so gently, uh, to go through a large outsourcing process. At the end of that, we were left with a setup that really didn't deliver the services that the business needed, and we had no ability to drive change for the organization anymore. So we decided to make ourselves redundant, um, and Andy took off to travel the world for a wee while. Uh, I had mortgage and a kid, uh, and kids, plural, uh, and so I didn't. Um, what I did then was start to look at how I could bring together the environment and social justice issues that I cared about with the technology and the work that I could do. Um, and that was the beginning of Brightly. We're a purpose-led technology solutions company. Um, we, in doing that, you know, day to day, what we do is create technology strategy, strategies for people. We solve their IT problems. To bring in the purpose-led um, aspect and to use a framework and make sure that we're really walking the talk on that, we adopted the B Corporation framework. Um, we gained our certification last year, which was an awesome piece of news to come through uh, in the middle of lockdown. Um, and what that means for us, so B Corporations, for those of you who don't know, some of the kind of familiar brands that you might be aware of, the likes of Patagonia and Allbirds, um, but there's, there's sort of roughly 3,500 globally 
um, is about 43 now in Aotearoa and it's and it's growing. Uh, also, there's an event here on them, by the way, tomorrow. Feel free to come along. A uh, little shout out there. Um, but what the what the framework means for us is that it takes a holistic view across how you run your company in terms of governance, your uh, environmental impact, how you treat your workers, how you're working with your community. It's a really, really good way of doing that. It's also a hugely useful tool for a small business because it takes you through a lot of practical things that, quite frankly, as a, as a founder, you'll just never get around to. Um, from... Uh, for us, as a purpose-led organisation, we look at that in terms of forgotten to us. Do my slides. Change within. Uh, kudos for doing that for 15 years. Uh, not easy. It wasn't working for me. Time for Brightly. <laughs> now we're all caught up. Uh, so... Um, we look at our impact in terms of three three main pillars. One is the way that we run the company. One is the way that we're working with our customers and then uh, what we call direct impact. When it comes to running the company, that's um, basically doing everything we can to reduce our negative impact. Um, so the team get around on a mix of e-bikes and public transport. We work from the awesome Grid AKL co-working space, which is a green building, energy efficient, reduce waste. Um, and uh, also work quite hard to increase diversity and inclusion and, and influence what we can in technology in that space, which can be challenging. The second aspect uh, in terms of how we work in with our customers is really where we see the biggest level of impact. Some of that's really simple stuff like, do you really need that shiny new laptop? Or could your existing device be upgraded? If you are buying a new laptop, is it upgradable and repairable? Was it made from recycled materials? Some of it's a bit more complex. What are the different climate impacts of cloud computing platforms? How does that compare to running your own servers? It also works really well for us where we can find innovative technology solutions to reduce organizations' waste and to make them more efficient, extend their scale and reach. And there's huge potential for technology. I'm definitely not a technology is going to solve the world's problems kind of person, uh, but it's what I do and, and we try and use it for good where we can. The third aspect is uh, direct impact, and that's where we have a commitment. We donate one percent of our charity, uh, one percent of our revenue to nonprofits who are addressing social and environmental issues, and then we partner with impact organisations like Sustainable Coastlines, Gun to Table, and uh, Sustainable Business Network Million Meters Project, with a mix of advisory, uh, pro bono services, and discounted services across uh, technical support and infrastructure and really help that stuff scale out. Um, for me, running out of time, um, the, the combination really comes down to what's important for me personally, as a couple of the other speakers have said, being true to those values, taking the individual action you can to make sure you're walking the talk, but more than that, working with other people, finding those connections and that collaboration, because none of us can do this alone. We can take all the individual action we like and it's not gonna shift the dial. We have to work together if we're gonna do anything meaningful. Thank you.